This is a demo of using an Excel-based tool to configure SolidWorks. So I'd like to start off with a simple part in SolidWorks. So what we'll do is we'll make a simple cube. So we'll start by drawing a rectangle. So now what we built is a add-in to Excel that allows us to use Excel formulas and equations to drive dimensions and equations and suppression logic inside of SolidWorks. So we'll start by getting the template set up. So what we get for building that template is a list of commands and the documentation of what they do. The primary ones will involve component activity and dimensions. But there's a lot of commands that involve component configurations and weldment configurations that I'll demo in a more complicated assembly after this one. So what we'll get started with is actually capturing the dimension from the model. So what we'll do is there's two ways we can go about this. We can just manually type in each of the dims, or we can use this capture tool that we built. So what ends up popping up is a form, and the form tells us what the selected range in our cell is. So that's where it's going to go and put the value at. So this button will go and capture the dimensions and features of the active document. All right. So we've captured D1 at sketch 1, D2 at sketch 1, and the D1 at the boss extrude. So we'll enter those in. And each time you enter, it increments the cell down. That way you can just quickly go and press them all real quick. So now that they're all captured, we can say if we wanted to go and change them now, So we'll go and build that out. And to quickly step, we've done some automation against SolidWorks using Excel. And you can also manually type these out if you'd like. Um, the only kind of pain point is when you go to, if you try to go and copy that out, SolidWorks gets rid of the at sketch. So you have to go and type that in manually. So I think this is a pretty handy tool to go and capture those. And it'll tell you the features. And a more complicated assembly, I'll kind of show, or I will show, that we can filter things out to make it easier to find what we're looking for. And we can also, in this, again, being Excel technologies, we can, if we needed to, we can make our own forms. So we're going to say this is a length, width, thickness. And we'll just say this is a 20, oops, 20 and 20. And we'll do this, and we'll say this equals length. How about we name it? <laughs> Alright, so let's go and get these a name real quick. So length, width, and thickness. Alright, so now that we got those names, so we could use this as a custom input form to go and change it if you had a bunch of values being driven. So And, this can, and, and then if you have them based on calculations, let's say that we're going to say that thickness is always uh, width. We'll say it's uh, width is divided by 2. So if you already have a, pre, a bunch of pre-existing formulas and conditions already built in Excel, you could just reuse them versus having to redo them all in SolidWorks or redo them in some other tool. So let's move on to a more complicated assembly. All right, so what we'll do now to demo a more complicated assembly is we'll open up a small assembly that we've already built. And we'll open up a sheet that's already set up to run it. So what we've built is a small input form and a 2D view of the uh, assembly to give the users some context to what they're working against. 
and you can have some of your major parameters here that go and drive all the equations. And this is a demo of just having a STL model inside of SOLIDWORKS. If you inside of Excel, if you wanted to see a 3D representation of what you're building. So what we have set up, we have a top level name set up. So what that tells the application is to go and check SOLIDWORKS to see what the active document is. And if the active document doesn't match this, it'll throw an error. So it helps prevent people from running the tool against the wrong assembly. And then we'll set component configurations. So So configurations are all driven, in this case, they're all driven by an Excel table called the design table. And you're allowed to go and just select each one. Uh, configurations do have a document reference and a component reference. So those changes we just made that document didn't actually do anything in this assembly. So if you wanted to change the actual component reference, We'll actually go in and select the inlet, or the inlet flange, and then that's the actual component uh, reference to the configuration. So that was just important to show because this is saying set component configurations, which actually needing a reference to the component versus a, a show configuration would be do, modifying the current active configuration in the document. And then Wellmet configuration. So what a Wilmot, so Wilmots can be one of two things of how they're configured. So if we open this assembly, or this is a Wilmot, and this inlet pipe, and we'll edit the feature. So this is not a configured part, so there's actually a file in a folder with each one of these in it. So this, so the program works well either way, so whether it's a configuration or a file, it'll go and find the file that can corresponds to the new configuration that you're wanting and set it to that. So it's the same as, so, exact, so it worked exactly the same as SOLIDWORKS did, so there wasn't a special step involved. So if we go into that stand assembly, again, Wilmot, we'll see these flat bar pieces and they're configured. So what that means is there's a configuration table driving each one of these versus a separate file. So these tend to be a bit easier to create. So this is mostly what you see in the newer files. There's still a lot of legacy files based on the file system approach. So now that we've got that set up, kind of explain kind of what we've got going on. We can go and change the sizes of this now. So we go to our build tab and what the program will do is it'll go and open each document that we specified and implant the dimensions and change the features as we tell it to. So it makes it pretty quick to go through and modify all these. Especially if you have a you're doing ETL work where you have a whole bunch of variations on the same theme. And you could even set up logic where if you changed uh, if you change this value, it would set both the flange and the pipe at the same time versus having it separate like I have. So if we wanted to change it to a four, and we re let's go and make it a bit longer. And we'll say it's going to be a forty-inch vessel this time. So we'll go and build that again. It makes it pretty easy to reconfigure something. And these are being driven by data validation, and you can do any type of data validation you like. In this case, we just imported a table of sizes. And these all correspond to the configuration table that Flange had. And these all correspond to the available 
configurations inside of that, uh, well, not configuration, the file names that that pipe had. So, and then I'll show you capturing data in more complicated assemblies. So, what we can do also is capture. So we've got this stand assembly open, so let's go and capture the information about it. So one thing we can do now is we've got um, quite a few thickness parameters and quite a few width parameters. So if you wanted to just look at your thicknesses, you could. You could just type in. thickness and just look at those and add those in if you want and the same thing with the features so if we wanted to suppress some of these flat bar bodies or even this boss extrude which is this backing panel so if we selected this and let's go and add in the feature activity and we're going to let's say we're going to suppress the boss extrude so now we've got that captured So now that we've added another parameter that we captured, when it goes through and build, it can actually suppress that stand if we need it or not, or suppress that backing plate to the stand. In that case, if you, and that's just for certain configurations, and if you wanted to make it a bit more complicated, you could just say stand backing plate required. And we're going to say, in this case, we'll just say equals true or false in this case, or equals false. And then what you can do is just say equals, and we'll say and with that. Now we're going to validate some blend logic. So we just say if logical test C27 so if if required we're going to say U and if not we're going to say S and we'll say U and if we just did this again we wanted to say true or equals true and it, go ahead and change and unsuppress it so you can make a quick input form to control all your various configurations pretty quickly. Um, thank you for watching.